Hi guys, today I'm going to be reviewing a new launch 123E which is new model without um, physical buttons so it's got only a touch screen which is quite cool so I'm going to cover my car to see more what we can do with this scanning tool so first thing we got settings settings like uh, units, screen capture, automatic detection uh, brightness, sound, network, network you can do that first of all so you're gonna get like updates or upgrades of your software uh, another thing before you start diagnosing your car check your voltage if you got voltage below like 12 volts there's no point to diagnose because your car m might be running rough or something which is simply because of your flat battery so if your battery is good we can uh, do diagnosis uh, another thing, data which is like recorded stuff, uh, this is DTC library. If you are connected to the network and if you're finding like trouble codes, you just simply check what is it, like so, which is gonna be lean bank 1, something to do with emissions, something to do with fuel ratio very uh, useful tool another thing is like um, gives you clue where are the OBD connectors like uh, located in your car or any car you're gonna uh, plug into you can do feedback, you can have like screenshots recorded, you can fix your firmware something wrong and we can start with this my auto detection is disabled so I'm gonna go through manual detection my car is E46 BMW and we're gonna go first of all like health report you're gonna do checks with this health report we can actually see what we got in in our car like with what kind of uh, modules no fault codes on uh, ECM it's scanning actually uh, automatic transmission my car is manual not equipped another ECM which is not equipped EWS no fault codes ABS uh, transfer case is not equipped so every, everything is like normal no problem with that you can go back uh, drive which is like engine and it's asking uh, what kind of connection is it 20 pin socket which is the old one round or new one OBD2 16 it's quite fast this device read trouble codes no fault codes and first tip don't try to fix your car by just reading fault codes it's gonna give you probably more trouble if you're not a professional or if you don't have any knowledge about that you can clear the codes or you can go uh, live live stream which is like basic uh, engine values of like battery voltage which is, which is very important that's why it's on top almost on top uh, air mass consumption of air and many other stuff uh, emission control, oxygen uh, mixture control the only thing is in here you don't have things like uh, short term filtrons which is very important when you're di diagnosing your car but you got some clues uh, because you got multi-captive or long term fuel trims they're gonna show you what kind of uh, long term fuel trims we got and I got minus 2.5 
and minus 2.7 on both bank is actually the same equal it's near zero it's that's actually no no problem with the engine showing no problem with the engine idle uh, smooth running of all the all of the cylinders you can now we got zero because it's not running probably some old uh, old values but if you if you are professional you can go back and use this it's connecting via uh, OBD straight away it's gonna be reading checking which what kind of protocol is gonna use for for that it's gonna take a few seconds and this is the stuff we're gonna see we can use now uh, most of you who got experience with cars you're gonna pick this which is live stream and you got all all the same stuff we had before but additionally we got short and field trims and we can see what the car is doing uh, when the engine is running I'm gonna start it you're gonna see you should see in a few seconds or maybe a minute short term fuel trims what they doing like uh, uh, on the engine r running like idle and using these two that depends how many banks we have on the engine this is like a straight six engine so we got two banks what the banks are doing and we can actually see them like on with digits or let's say graph so we got oscillation of short and fuel trims up and down near zero I can go back I can combine them I can pick two and you're gonna see uh, two graphs overlapping each other so we can see if there's like some kind of problem with them one is like going let's say plus the other one is going minus and then we can actually start doing diagnosis but I see there's no problem I know my engine so uh, there will be no problem with that another thing let's say we can check uh, oxygen sensor Bank one sensor one, bank two sensor one, which is upstream before catalytic converter. And again, we get two graphs overlapping. It's hard to see actually on this graph, but if you're gonna pick one. It's easier to see what um, auto sensor is doing. So it's actually quite cool device. It's actually only for diagnosis of your car engine. It's nothing like uh, doing mileage correction or something like that. But to check codes, to check uh, what the engine is doing, it's quite cool actually. The touch screen is responsive. Uh, I got no updates coming because I done it yesterday so everything's up to date so now I'm gonna give you some examples like I got uh, rough running BMW engine N42 got some misfires etc etc uh, checking the codes I got misfires on a mm, few cylinders also one code showing something to do with the lambda sensor auto sensor I'm gonna show you short term fuel trims also I'm gonna show you um, the voltage on one of them where the cause is actually occurring so first of all we got very bad fuel trims on bank 2 the auto sensor is actually warming up so we're gonna wait uh, let's say a minute to show you that one of the sensors is actually not reacting for the fuel mixture
I'm gonna combine the graphs. I'm gonna wait a few uh, seconds or let's say a minute until they, they're gonna warm up. And I can see on the graph the one is rising up, it wants to do something, the other one is flat. So I got zoom of the bank one which is operating and bank two is doing nothing. Bank one short term fuel trims is operating, uh, bank two is minus 25 so it's too rich and I'm gonna show you why. Most of the people uh, will go and change the uh, auto sensor but the first thing I want to do is check underneath the car if there's some kind of problem with wiring loom etc etc maybe socket full of oil or whatever but I'm gonna check that before I'm gonna buy new uh, auto sensor so I already checked I I did nothing actually to the um, to the plastic cover of the wiring loom for the sensor and I can see already there's some kind of problem somebody was here before me you can see the wire is actually cracked the yellow and the red is cracked I'm gonna give you zoom I don't know who was before me but uh, actually I could fix that by soldering but it's not good practice to do soldering on the wiring uh, for the auto sensor so I'm just simply gonna replace that and check uh, what's gonna happen this engine might have some other issues like vacuum leaks etc etc got like uh, VVT which is Valvetronic uh, uh, engine equipped with special system but we're gonna start with that to actually see what kind of uh, filters you got. After fixing that, we're gonna check what the filters I'm doing and carry on with the diagnosis. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.